I don't know how everybody else feels. I have this kind of combination of being extremely exhilarated and extremely exhausted at the same time. And I was trying to scribble down some notes of things that I wanted to say, and I had this feeling like I just couldn't actually think <laughs> anymore. I just have taken in so much information and met so many, um, met so many people. Um, and I was thinking, I, I've had some, f had some very um, positive and, um, feedback from people that I've spoken to. I, I guess the people who haven't had positive feedback haven't come and spoken to me. Um, but feel free to. Um, <laughs> but maybe tomorrow, not today. Um, and I, I was thinking about why this conference has been so special, and I think one of the reasons why is that it is so unique is because it is actually a civil society owned uh, civil society owned conference that's brought governments and corporations into this space and created a kind of an environment in which conversations can happen um, and which we can debate and be honest with each other uh, and also challenge each other. Um, and I think we talked right at the beginning about you know, gathering a room of experts and making unreasonable demands, and which was the quote from Ilya, and I sort of feel like we have done that and I look forward to more unreasonable demands. Um, the conversations seem to be much more mature than the conversations in 2011. I feel as though the lexicon has actually changed. And, and we have much more of a shared lexicon and new words in that lexicon as well, but also a capacity to be able to communicate with each other across diverse stakeholder groups and diverse issues. And I think any, most of us who have kind of hopped between different rooms um, have seen, like I went from the LGBT session, which was amazing, and list, just listening to some of the voices there, and then all the way into um, um, the export control discussion, which was about the Wassenaar Agreement, and how we're going to stop the sale and the transfer of technologies that would do people harm um, across borders. And just the kind of diversity of the, and the depth and the expert nature of the conversation. And I think I said in the opening session that just about the extraordinary level of expertise. And I think our level of expertise has actually gone one step up. I feel like I have learned an incredible amount and I feel like everybody here, I hope, has also learned an incredible amount. Um, and what we have in a way is like a global network of digital rights defenders here. And and we have a real possibility to grow this network. And this is the 700 people or so who um, were here. And then there's thousands more. And I think you know, there's a real opportunity to double and redouble and quadruple that effort as the challenges have become greater and the possibilities become greater. And we talked also earlier about, at the beginning of the session, about outcomes. And like, what are the outcomes of the conference? And you know, I said, like, let's build coalitions, action plans, or even just the next step. And I, I've been talking to a few people just casually and scribbling stuff down, and I feel like there's so many outcomes that have come from this conference and so many that are yet to come as well, even just the possibility of meeting another person. I think at the beginning it was like, talk to somebody in the room who you don't know. I think it's much harder to find a person in the room that you don't know now. And, um, and so, you know, just a couple of random outcomes that from conversations that I have. And incidentally, there's going to be a document um, that's going to be put up um, later on today, which uh, has a whole collection of outcomes, which the policy team, headed by Yokai, has pulled together through all of the sessions. There's been access staff and volunteers taking notes and pulling together one outcome uh, per, per group. Um, and, well, I sort of say not every group. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a living document as well, so we'll put a draft up at the end, so you have an opportunity if you want to send an outcome. My email address is brett at accessnow.org, so it's B-R-E-T-T -T at accessnow.org. If there are any outcomes, even if it's something small or something large or something monumental or something pos which has a possibility, please send me an email and we'll try and include that in the outcomes document so that we've got a sense of why all of us spent all of these days together. Um, and what the possibilities are going forward. You know, the global, there's a global network um, discussion uh, under the Dynamic Coalition on Network Neutrality. 
and they've agreed to coordinate across Brazil, Europe, South America um, on network neutrality in, in, in with the intent of launching a global campaign to, to ensure non-discrimination on the network. Uh, another coalition of organizations across the Atlantic from Brussels to DC to deal with privacy and surveillance issues. The US government on this stage made an announcement that the International Human Rights Framework applies. Um, um, in, and the International Human Rights Framework applies um, in the field of uh, surveillance, which is a first, and I know it sounds obvious to us, but it actually apparently got cleared by the NSA, so it's a, a step forward. Um, we've seen also the, like, the, the MLAT group that met, uh, the experts, a dozen of them, to try and fix that broken system. The Digital Rights Fund, which I proposed at the beginning of $50 million, is now $100 million, um, which I'm really excited about. It was like 50 million bucks, let's make it 100 million. And what we could do with that. The Rapid Responders Group met, which is 22 people across the world who are responding to civil society and um, digital security threats and now have a coordinated group that's able to operate 24-7 to all the digital security attacks that are happening to civil society actors and people, again, who are experiencing civil digital attacks. Please, um, you can email help at accessnow.org or any other members of the Rapid Responders Group. Um, who went to the demo room? I mean, Holy crap, that was just extraordinary. And congratulations to Benetech in particular for helping to coordinate that. I've never seen so much energy and so many people lying on beanbags. Uh, <laughs> speaking of beanbags, there are five beanbags in this room. Whoever is lying on a beanbag, it's yours. You can take it with you. If you don't want it, and I can see um, Gavea in the back, and if you can't take it to Cairo, so you can give it to someone. But there are five here to take away, and thanks a lot to Fat Boy, who um, gave us a radically reduced price for those beanbags. Um, speaking of which, the plants, all the little plants, not the big ones, but the little plants are also um, yours. So if you see one, any of the rooms, you're welcome to take a plant with you. Make sure you water it. The cactuses don't need a lot of water. <laughs> you can't have my jacket. <laughs> Um, so, um, and, then, and then there were just the anecdotes of the random conversations that happened in the corridors. The original plan for this conference was to turn the corridor into the conference, i.e. to have an opportunity for you to be able to ask to be able to speak to each other. And hopefully we did that in the sessions and we did, created lots of space like this one for people to be able to hang out in and do those random discussions including on the dance floor last night, that shall not be mentioned. Um, but um, I also just wanted to, to raise a couple of other things, and that is the Encrypt All The Things campaign, um, which i um, very pleased to say that Twitter signed up to and a number of other companies really excited about that, and thanks very much to Amy on my team and Yochai and Catherine who have worked so diligently um, on that. So, with that, um, I'd like to actually thank all of our sponsors. Um, and there is, oh, don't do that. Actually, okay, let's stay there. But you're gonna have to go backwards, the person behind the screen. Um, so um, I'd like to thank um, all of the sponsors. I'm gonna name them, and if we could just have a round of applause at the end, um, if you would like to clap, that's up to you. But I, wanted to, I wanna name them individually. I'm not, insist, I'm not insisting that you, that you clap course. Um, I will clap. Um, Mozilla, um, um, Cedar, Humanity United, Hivos, Facebook, Google, um, the Ford Foundation, ICANN, Twitter, Microsoft, eBay, Internet Society, Anchor Free, MDF. Uh, there's also Vocal and Silicon Valley Community Fund Foundation. Uh, did I miss one? Um, who came in at the last minute. Um, and I also want to thank the funders who supported the global voices, the voices of people from around the world. I think we have all benefited from, um, from hearing people on the front line of digital rights defense. And, I, um, and you know, I think we've all been personally enriched by that. Uh, many people, as we know and we discussed in the beginning, are at risk and uh, under attack. 
and, and there are a number of people at the last conference who, are not, who, who aren't with us today. And I think this idea about the isolation that individuals face, particularly in our sector, um, particularly those who are facing a screen, um, coders on their own, etc., and the isolation, and also the external threats that people are facing. So people who, um, who are vulnerable, of course. One of the things that we tried to do, actually, was um, we had uh, four masseurs here over the conference who were giving mass, it's, who were set up for the digital activists to help relieve some of the tension. Um, but seriously, if there, is, if there are people who are feeling at risk, many people who have escaped some form of danger um, to get here and, of course, are going home, please know that there is a global community of digital rights defenders here in this room and beyond who can assist, so please do reach out. Um, I am really, really, really excited to announce that, um, that we are going to host, um, together with Engage Media, RightsCon Southeast Asia uh, in March of 2015. And I'd like to invite the organising committee, some of the organising committee, up onto the stage to um, come and say a word or two. So we have Tech Tech from Burma and Atit from Thailand and Andrew from Australia and Becky and Indu from Indonesia and Pranesh from India, which isn't exactly which isn't exactly Southeast Asia. Who wants to say something? And you'll have to use this little mic. I think it's me. I'm Indu. I'm the managing director of India's Media. We're a regional organization uh, based primarily in Jakarta, and we use technology and media mainly around rights to act, uh, access to information issues. And the RightsCon Southeast Asia will be happening in Manila, and we'll hope to see you there. Unless it does anyone else want to say anything? No. Okay. <laughs> cool. So that's it. I know we're really, really excited about this. We've been planning this over the last, I don't know, couple of months. And we just finally agreed this week. Um, Andrew and Indu came especially for the conference to see how it runs. And of course, it will be different and it will be culturally, you know, kind of more contextualized and there will be different issues at hand. But everybody here is invited to attend. Um, so thanks a lot, guys. And, and whilst we're on thanks um, and, and acknowledgements, um, I wanted to thank the ACCESS team in particular. Um, maybe some of the ACCESS team, all of the ACCESS team could stand up. Would that be okay? I, I wholeheartedly agree with the crowd. Um, I mean, just to you guys, you are absolutely incredible. Um, the amount of work that they have put into this last three years or four years, um, and the, the amount of work that obviously has gone into this conference is just staggering. And I, you know, speaking of experts, I feel like every person on this team is an expert. And Gustav looks like he's coding as, we, as I speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said he's logging jobs on the, on the helpline. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to thank you guys very much. And, and also, on top of that, to thank the, um, the volunteers. Because there was a small army of volunteers, maybe 20 of them. So maybe we could also have a round of applause for all of them. I think that's it. I think we're done. So we'll see you uh, in Southeast Asia, Manila, March 2015. Have a safe journey home. Thank you.